how's it going Star Seekers? My name's Got Cake, and in this review we're going to be taking a look at Clash Force, a 2D action platformer game where you play as one of three humanimal members of the Clash team who are on a mission to stop Crackman and his evil forces from invading. Hitting the main menu we see each of our three members looking pretty badass. We have Voom, the nicotine stained rhino, Scorpedo, the scorpion thing with a green brain, and Etchid the duck-faced hedgehog who I think may be some sort of platypus. Taking a quick look at the options, we get a language, an audio mute toggle and nothing more. And then we can jump straight into the practice slash credit stage to get a feel for the game. We move with the analog stick or D-pad, hit the B button to jump, and holding B makes us jump higher. We can then shoot our weapon with a Y button to destroy the targets. And one thing that the game's tutorial doesn't tell you, which I later found out, is that you can auto fire by holding X or any of the R buttons, and this saves your thumbs a lot of work. So further up in the tutorial we encounter a robot carrying a weapon upgrade and there are several of these in the game. They basically affect our projectile pattern in various ways and you'll see some of these in the gameplay footage. In the top left of the screen we see our health indicated by health containers, and below our health is an icon that displays our current weapon. Taking a hit will remove our weapon upgrade and will also cost us a heart, but we can restore one of our heart containers by collecting these pickups occasionally found in levels, and we can also protect ourselves with these shield pickups which will absorb a single hit and stop us from losing our weapon. Obviously if we lose all three of our hearts, we'll explode into a firework display and have to start the level from the beginning. When we get to the end of the practice stage we find some blocks containing the name of the Clash Force creators. So back at the main menu we can now begin the real game. We first select our file slot and then get to select a difficulty to play on. I played the game on normal difficulty, but hard mode increases enemy movement and projectile speed, and expert mode increases these even more, and you only get two health points. After picking a difficulty we then get to choose a character to play as, and are then taken to the stage select screen. Now there are a total of 21 stages in the game, comprised of 15 standard stages, 5 boss stages and the final stage and we have to complete one stage to unlock the next one. So the first stage of the game is called Forest Base Area 1. As we make our way through this first stage, we encounter various robotic enemies which are destroyed with a single shot from our gun, have to hop our way over a few dangerous looking spike pits, and blast our way past a couple of turrets which take a few hits to destroy. We also get to try out a couple of different weapon upgrades along the way, and after about two minutes we reach the end of the level. Following the completion of this stage and every other stage in the game, we get to play a little bonus stage where random power ups fly through the air above us, and we can jump up to grab one or choose not to and just continue to the next level. We then begin the level with our current power up and any lost health is restored. Now if at any point we quit to the main menu we can then head back into our save file, reselect any character we want, and then play any of the stages that we've already unlocked, but we'll start with our basic weapon. So we continue onward blasting our way through the second and third forest base stages, collecting various power ups and fighting a few new enemies, such as these big totem poles which fire multiple projectiles at us, and these annoying little fish which jump out of the water and spit bubbles at us. After completing the third stage we get a final bonus stage before we head into the fourth stage, which contains the forest base boss, a giant robotic venus flytrap with good old crackman sat in its forehead. Now this first boss's mechanics are pretty simple, we just blast away at it whilst attempting to avoid the spiky thing as it spits out in random directions. If you manage to retain your weapon upgrade you'll make light work of it, and following its defeat we head on down into the underground area, whose first stage is incredibly annoying. Here we find ourselves on moving platforms and have to shoot and avoid enemies as we slowly make our way through the cave. Now you often need to jump to shoot enemies in this stage, but the problem is that you maintain no forward momentum when you jump, so platforms move from beneath us, and we have to try and jump, shoot and land back on the moving platforms, which is actually quite tricky and took me a few attempts before I managed to get through the level. Following this we continue onward through the levels and each comes with their own distinct visual feel, from crystalline caves to industrial areas filled with turrets and buzz saws. We fight several more bosses along the way before eventually facing Crackman in a final battle. Now there's not much else to say with regards to Clash Force's gameplay dynamics, so I'll give you my opinions on the game. To begin with I really like the game's visuals and chiptune music, and I thought the developers did a decent job at presenting a game which was very reminiscent of the 8 bit NES era. Each stage was uniquely different in appearance, and if anything the only thing that I'd criticise is the character sprites, which had very few frames of animation to them. 
overall level design in the game was pretty good, and though the platforming segments weren't hugely challenging, there was a good balance between platforming and enemy placement. What I will say though is that the final few stages did feel a little cheap and got pretty frustrating. In this stage for example you encounter several enemies which can't be destroyed, which for the most part isn't a huge issue, until you get to this section where you got a ton of ceiling turrets firing down on you, and several of these green exploding enemies, and it must have taken me a good 30 attempts just to get through this section alive. It's this next stage though that's the real ball ache, and in my opinion the worst in the game. Much like in the underground level you begin on small platforms, or should I say missiles in this case, which slowly descend as you stand on them. All sorts of shit then comes flying through the air at you which you barely have a chance to dodge, and when you jump it also feels like you're fighting against the wind that's pushing you backwards. The stage just felt overly chaotic, the jumping was a pain, and you have to try and memorise the order in which stuff flies across the screen and just hope for the best. Now out of everything that I've mentioned, the one thing that stands out as being the worst aspect of Clash Force has to be the game's bosses. None of the bosses are programmed with any sort of attack pattern for you to learn. They all just fire projectiles at you in random patterns, and it's this randomness and lack of imagination which I really felt let the game down. Unlike the Mega Man or Sonic games, there are no boss beating tactics for you to learn here, and you just have to hope that you get good RNG. One final thing that I'll mention is that apart from their appearance, every character is identical, which makes me wonder why they even bothered to design three characters. It's a shame really as giving them different abilities could have added variety and replayability to the game, but as it stands the only reason to replay the game is to experience its harder difficulties, but with the RNG boss mechanics I have my doubts of how fun this would actually be. So now we come to rating the game. Now I rate games between 1 and 5 stars, with a Shubwa stamp of approval reserved for the worst games on the eShop. This rating is based on my own personal opinion on what a game has to offer in terms of gameplay and value for money to potential buyers. And for a rating I'd give Clash Force 2 out of 5 stars. Overall Clash Force is a decent action platformer with some good visuals and nostalgic gameplay and it's worth a play, but in my mind it's let down by a lack of creativeness in its RNG boss battles, which just ended up being a bit frustrating and personally impacted on my enjoyment of the game. Now you can get the game from the UK Switch eStore for £3.99, or from the US eStore for $3.99. Alternatively it's also available on Steam, Xbox One and PlayStation 4. And that's it for this review of Clash Force, let me know your opinions on it in the comments section below. As always hit that like button if this review helped you out, subscribe for future Switch Indie Game reviews, and jump onto the Discord to join me and the other maniacs on there. For now though I just want to thank you all once again for watching, and until next time, game on.